Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, I am going to do a big pearl pour. So I wanted to do one on a large canvas which also has deep sides. So I mixed up colours, mixed up my paint and I'm all ready to go. I'm just going to show you what colours I have used. So first of all, I've got, so all of these are Extreme Sheen from Deco Art, um, and they're mixed one to one. So I have Sky Blue Topaz at the beginning, then I have Coral second of all, Amethyst is the third one, I've got Vintage Brass as the fourth one. Aqua Marine, Jadeite, and last of all, Rose Gold. So I just wanted a nice assortment. Um, I wanted seven colours. I wanted to do something a little bit colourful, but without just being completely bold colours. So there's like, some of these are quite subtle, like the Sky Blue, the Jadeite, um, even the Coral and the vintage brass they're not like strong strong it's not like 24k gold and things like that so i i think these colors will complement each other quite well and sometimes you don't really know till you do it and this just looked like something fun to do i haven't done a um a big pearl pour on this size canvas so i thought i'm going to just do it so they are all mixed 10 grams paint to 10 grams Australian flow troll. Then I mixed up um, my black paint, which is Montmartre um, Studio Acrylics. And that is 85 grams paint, 170 grams um, Australian flow troll, and 50 grams of water. So it's given me this nice runny-ish texture. Um, I don't want it thicker and I don't want it thinner. If it's any thinner, then your pearls go out of shape. If it's any thicker, the pearls have trouble coming up. So this is what I decided to do. Um, the canvas is a 40 by 50 centimeter, which is very, very close to 16 by 20 inch. Just, um, it's not even a centimeter. Um, it's probably like that. So it's it's an Australian sized canvas, not, um, not an inch sized canvas but it's very, very similar to a um, 16 by 20. The only thing I'm going to do different this time is when I pour my black, I'm going to pour my black through a strainer. So I find um, a couple of times I have had little clumps and the black isn't too bad, but um, I'm going to do it anyway, just in case, because you get one clump and it kind of skews your artwork and I don't really want that. Um, I want this to be beautiful and smooth. And that's about it. So um, now I'm just going to give these a tiny little stir before I actually pour them onto the canvas. Always um, just give them a little, little extra stir to make sure they haven't settled. So I'm going to pour half of this. So I'm gonna do everything twice. Now, some of these colours, <clears throat> pardon me, will end up getting a bit buried, but that's okay. So now I'm going to do this one, but I'm going to kind of do a bit of a W. Actually, it's not half there. I know that's slightly over half. That's all right. It's not imperative that you do two layers or half at a time. I just like to do it this way. And then I'm going to kind of go like that. The reason I do this is because it, it shows more of the colours. When you pour it all onto each other, you kind of can lose a colour um, completely. And it also means that the pearls come out in a different pattern. 
they come out more all over the place instead of uh, <clears throat> a ring of color here, a ring of color here, a ring of color here. So that's why I do it. So even though I'm doing them in a set order, um, they're all kind of getting quite mixed into each other anyway. So. So I love pearl paws. They're one of my favorites, but I'm trying to do something a little bit different each time is not always easy. And mix and match if you like, do whatever colors you think are gonna look cool together. So as you can see, my sky blue and my coral are quite disappeared in there. That's fine. And now I just pour the second half on in a bit of a pattern and then just scrape out the rest. I do it because I only mix up what I'm going to use. Um, I don't try to save the paint or put it in different locations. I find I'm more likely to lose it um, or it just gets old. Unless you're going to do another pour straight away afterwards where you're going to use it for that one. But I mix up what I'm going to use. It also keeps the consistencies more even. And with pearl paws, you've got to try to get that, you, you really have to try to stick with your um, measurements once you've got, got it worked out. So when I do this, I, I use the same ratio that I use for other canvases. I just work out how many centimetres I've got and how much paint I need for that. So if I increase my size of my canvas, I just increase the amount of paint to match. So I'm kind of just covering the canvas. I don't want to have too much excess. Um, also, the this one I added a tiny little bit extra only because it's a deep sided canvas. So I do have to make sure there's enough paint to actually cover the sides as well as the top. But as you can see, these colours look really well. They're not overly bright on top of each other. I'll do a bright one another time. Just about there. <clears throat> so I think seven colours was a pretty cool amount to do. I did have nine colors pick, but I decided to go for a seven. So if you use the ratios that I've used and just adjust them according to your canvas size, um, that's gonna be your best way to get good results. Because if you use too much paint, um, you don't always get 
wonderful results. And if you don't use enough, then you're not going to cover the canvas. And you also need to um, keep the, the thickness at a very good level. So these here are actually at a very good um, consistency to be able to get everything working out quite well. So now um, I will get some gloves ready. So always best to have everything completely set up before you actually pour. Because once you start pouring that black, um, you do kind of need to watch what you're going, you're doing and kind of get the wig long. Can't waste too much time. So if you set yourself up beforehand, then you should get good results. Alrighty. So just double check that's nice and stirred. I'm gonna pinch that. So we don't really want this to smash down too heavily into the paint either. Now I'm gonna have to take that pop stick out. So I'm doing this just so I can sift it, just to make sure there's no clumps. And just pouring straight over the puddle. And I don't scrape my cup when I do a pearl pour. Okay, that's it. And it looks like I didn't have any clumps. But I'd rather strain it and not get clumps than try to fix that up later on. Now I'm going to quickly torch it and get rid of any bubbles that are sitting in there because there is bubbles. Just the majority of them. Now the fun part. So I'm just going to tilt. And now I make sure that I go over the first edge um, more than the others. So you get it close, but you want to get it over and tip a little bit excess because that is where the um, metallic is otherwise I get a blank corner so now I'm coming down here and again go over and come back I'm gonna go up to this opposite corner sometimes it's hard to see exactly where all the paint is when you're pouring in black over and come back, bringing it back down to the middle. It's hard to see. There we go. Now at the last corner. And edges. Make sure all your edges are done too. So now, sorry, I'm tipping it out of view. So you want to go right over. 
and then I'm coming back. I want to try and stretch the paint back down into the middle where the main weight of the paint will be. It's hard to see. I think that's close to it there. So let me put this down and check your corners right now. Make sure that they have paint on them. Especially if you've got a deep edged one like this. I'm just gonna lean over the canvas. Yeah, that first corner did I. That's why I always go over the first corner very heavily. Um, I also find it just makes sure that the, the paint has covered. So that side is done. That side's completed. That side is, and the back end is awesome. Okay, so now is just the waiting game. I'm not going to do any more tilting, otherwise the pearls that have already come up will start going um, funny shaped. So I'm just going to take my gloves off. So sometimes I do put something underneath the canvas where I pour off and um, like a coaster or something. So any excess goes onto that so you can get a little pearl coaster. Um, I did it this time. I don't, didn't really have time to set one up. But I can see lots of pearls already developing and the sides are awesome. So the sides are getting really, really lots of pearls. Now, I will torch this again, just to make sure there's no bubbles. pearls are one of those things that you always you're not ever too sure exactly how many pearls are going to show up or how um whether you're going to get a big black center or just a smaller black center um i'm just pour it and i leave it and i wait and see but already i can see some really awesome um color so i've got like a blue a rose gold i've got some amethyst i've got the coral um and some vintage I can see showing up here, aquamarine. Um, all the colors are showing up in various levels around. So that's why I like doing that kind of shape. I think there's even some jadeite running through that little spot there. So this should look really, really cool. Now I am just double checking the corners again. So on some canvases where they fold them at the corner, um, as it gets wet, it kind of separates a little bit and you get like a little white seam. Um, just check that. And if you do, just get some, like a little pop stick with a bit of black paint and just run it in that little seam. Um, I'm not getting that on this canvas. Depending on the quality of your canvas, I do find is how much that will actually um, show up or not. But all we can do now is wait. So I will pause this and we will come back in about 10 to 15 minutes and see what has come up. But I got a feeling I'm going to get my black. So most of them you get a black spot. I'm going to probably get my black spot around here. I think that will fill in. I think all the edges this side will fill in there. I think I'll have a little bit of a black center there. But... <clears throat> A matter of waiting and seeing so pausing and we'll be back in about 10 15 minutes okay now we're back awesome look how many pearls have shown up so i have the black part right where i was expecting it to be but i do actually think that's going to shrink a little bit more um so today's a little bit cooler um 
it's actually been a really wet and cold spring um, so I think this is going to take slightly longer to dry but in the meantime the I don't think a lot more pearls will show up but some of these ones in this area might just swell a little bit more to just fill in that a, a tiny bit more um, but look at all these colors and assortments that there is so I don't know how well you can see it through the camera um, sometimes the lighting makes it a little bit hard but there's like coral amethyst um, sky blue topaz um, probably even aquamarine then we've got the um, brass over here is more coral then there's jadeite through there there's more um, brass here then there's rose gold and that's just in that one little patch so and all the way around it just changes and some colors show up more in one spot like there's a there's a patch of rose gold and a patch of rose gold over here but then I can see there's an amethyst streak there's a um, aquamarine I think that's an aquamarine um, there's just assortments going all the way around I love this and this is going to actually dry really really well so what will happen is is sometimes um this area where there's a little bit of negative space the the cells will push and swell up a little bit bigger where over here where they're smaller they've got no room to push into each other because they're hitting each other so they kind of stay that smaller shape but it does give you a really good assortment and array and you never really know exactly how it's going to go. Um, I've, you, I've done these enough now that I know roughly how it's going to turn out. But you never know exactly. Um, one thing I did do when I was off camera. As soon as I paused it, I went with my palette knife and I scraped underneath um, the lip to get off any excess paint that's dripping. Because what it will do is it will keep pulling on these edges and stretch out the cells on the edges when you don't want that. So by doing the scraping, I've prevented that from happening. Um, the sides are really cool. So what's happened is a pearl develops on the edge and then because of the weight, it pulls down and it gives you these like stretched, um, it gives you a pearl, a pearl color, but it's kind of in a, a wave look or it's really hard to explain, but they're awesome. And they go all the way around. So that's why sometimes the thick edged canvases work well. If you were going to put this in, um, I probably wouldn't put it in a hallway because you won't see it as much. But if you did have it in somewhere like that, you would actually see the edges as well. So some canvases or some artwork, you don't get very exciting edges and some you do. This is a type of pour that you get really cool edges. So that is about it. Now, all we have to do, I have one tiny little white thing that just dropped. I'm going to steady my arm. And grab it. I try not to um, fiddle with these because sometimes if there's pearl colour underneath, you can actually grab it and bring it to the top but it gives you a funny um doesn't give you a proper pearl shape because it's from you dragging it up not from it developing by itself so over here on this corner there's pearls but they're a little bit more faint when here they're really solid you, you get that kind of assortment that happens throughout it but this is really cool and i love it so i am going to pause it bring you down for some close-ups and show you what it looks like from my angle Okay, so here we go. It's actually really hard because it's quite a big canvas. So it's covering up most of my table. And my camera is so high, I can only just see the screen. But as you can see, beautiful assortment. These ring lights are frustrating. But sometimes it goes a little bit dull when I turn them off. Only because you can't see what's going on. So I'll turn them off. So the pearls on this side, um, down here, are just as bright as over there. It's only because I've only got that one strip light now that's lighting them up. Because that doesn't seem to reflect. But these are so, so cool. 
Let's focus. Look at them. Really, really nice assortment. The pearls are quite well shaped. I call these pebble shape because they push into each other and kind of give you like a river stone look. There's a reflection of me in there. But as you can see, all these different colours. And I actually don't think the camera is... Let me see. I just adjusted the lighting. The camera really doesn't pick it up as the colours as good as they are in real life. They are, like even here, the light is reflecting and making them a little bit more pale. But they're super shimmery, awesome colours. And see how you've got colours in colours? Fantastic. Sorry, I'm really excited about this one. So, there we go. So, Pearl Paw using seven colours. Um, and on a larger canvas, so this was a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Um, I do plan to do one on a huge canvas one day. I just haven't got a big enough space in my art room to actually do one that big yet. Um, I need to get myself a new table and it's a work in progress, my art room. I keep doing bits and pieces and making it more, um, more set up. But yeah, so tell me what you think. So I would love to hear your comments. So like, share, subscribe and comment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And when you subscribe, hit the bell and click all and it will tell you when new videos come up because I'm always making new ones. Um, sometimes it's a few days, sometimes it's a week. Um, I get to them when I have free time. But thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have a wonderful time. So Pearl Paw with seven colours and a recipe in there is included. Alright, have a great day everyone. Bye.